I've overhauled the scroll view component. It was using the Unity scroll view, but now I've scrapped that. Had too many problems. Written it all from scratch for you to uh, basically be exactly like UI scroll view on iOS. I think this is a very powerful component now. I don't know of anything like this for Unity anywhere, so I think uh, you're really going to enjoy this. So let's dive right in and show you how this works. Demo scene zoomable scroll view is still there, just been revamped. Inside the scene we have main camera. We have a canvas with my star background. We've got the scroll view image, which is going to be my content that I scroll around. That's the earth. It has a finger scroll view component script on it with a bunch of properties. And finally we have this panel here that's just this debug text there. Uh, and I have this diagnostic text that's commented out and disabled, so don't worry about that. Uh, let's get going on these properties here. You need to assign the scroll content to the script, and that's the scroll view image here. You need to assign the canvas, and that's up right here. Finally, if you have a canvas that's not in screen space, you can assign your camera right there. Uh, for most canvases, they're going to be screen space, and that'll be null. We've got a bunch of properties here. We've got a max speed property. This determines how fast in uh, canvas coordinates the content can move uh, after you pan. So let's run this and I'll show you what I mean. So when you're panning, it's going to snap the object back and make sure it doesn't go out of bounds. That's just like UI scroll view on iOS. But let's zoom in a little bit and you'll see me be able to flick the earth and you'll notice that it moves after I'm done panning. That's where this max speed comes into play. And you can ratchet that all the way up and you'll get a little more speed out of that. Typically you probably don't want that much higher than this, otherwise the pan will be doing a little too much. Your users might get annoyed. Uh, we've got double tap zoom out, so let's do that. So basically, if you're more than 2.5 multiplier of zoom scale, uh, we're at 1.04, so this double tap should zoom in. And it did. Now we're at a scale of 4, which is our double tap zoom in amount. Let's slide this over so you can see these full names. So that double tap zoom out threshold basically means if you're under that zoom scale, or if you've zoomed in further than that, it'll zoom out. Here's what I mean. There you go. So I was zoomed in beyond that point, so it did a zoom out when I double tapped. Now that my scale is low and is below that, it will zoom in. So let's zoom in on Madagascar here. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Sorry, a lot of functionality here, but I think this is going to be awesome for you all. We've got the double tap animation time in seconds, so let's set that really small. Uh, maybe that was too small. Zero. Yeah, that's not going to work. There we go. <laughs> I'll fix that when I release so that you can't set it to zero. But for now, you can see that's moving real fast. Probably too fast. And then you can make it go nice and slow. So set that to a value, whatever you want. I think the default I had is probably pretty good. It happens quickly, but slowly enough so that the user sees exactly what's happening. Okay, the pan dampener, this basically, when you pan, it reduces speed. So the higher this is, the less speed will be reduced. So if I set this to that, basically the speed will never reduce until it hits the edge of the scroll view. So you probably don't want that. So you probably want to set that to a low value. The lower the value is, the faster it will decelerate. I think I had a 0.95, which I thought was a pretty good value. You could lower that or raise that as you see fit. Scale dampening. So this is, when you zoom in and out, there's a little bit of a linger here. You can see that as I'm scaling in and out. If you increase the dampening, then that will become less of an effect. So let me show you what I mean. Or actually, it will reduce the scale velocity so there's not much linger now that I'm scaling and if I reduce the scale dampening all the way down it basically scale forever okay so I think I had that at 0.1 which is a pretty good value it gives a little bit of linger there 
Scale speed is the same thing, it just determines how fast it scales. You can see that that's scaling really fast, which may be what you want. I mean, it depends how large your view is. You'll have to play with these. I think this Earth is 4,000 pixels width and height, so that's a fairly large view, so the scale speed should probably be a little larger there. Okay, minimum and maximum scale just determines how tiny you can get. So with a minimum scale like that, you can get a really tiny Earth. And with a maximum scale of 8, you can zoom in pretty far. Now you'll notice when you hit that, it'll bounce back. That's what UI scroll view does. It just indicates that you're hit, hitting your maximum zoom. Although you can all go all the way up to 100 and get kind of be just ridiculous there. So again, depends how big your image is. If you've got like an 8K texture, you might be able to ra raise that max scale. Finally, we have the bounce modifier, which basically determines how bouncy things are. So let's reduce that. And you can see the bounce recovery is quite slow. Or you can raise it all the way up and have no bounce at all. Point two, again, trial and error. I found that one to work pretty well, but if you don't like it, tweak that. Okay. Uh, that's the full tutorial for the scroll view. I think you're really going to enjoy this. Uh, send me a message on the Unity forms for finger gestures if you have questions, or send me an email. And I hope you enjoy this component, and I love to see what games you all are making, so please email me any demo videos or screenshots, and I will put them up on the asset page so people can see how this is being used. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, everyone.